All right. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome back to another Geek Vibes Nation interview. I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me director Dimitri Logothetis. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. Awesome. Uh, Dimitri is the director for the upcoming movie Gunner, which stars Morgan Freeman and Luke Hemsworth. Now, is that um, movie currently filming or is it wrapped up? Just uh, finished the movie last weekend and just flew back. Uh, we were we were shooting in Birmingham, Alabama, and uh, just came back into town a few days ago, um, catching up on my sleep. So we're in post now and uh, we're just we're just cutting the film. Nice. I was going to say, are you happy to be home? Oh, yeah. Always happy to be home. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the film was written by Gary Scott Thompson, who wrote the Fast and Furious uh, film franchise. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Can you tell the viewers what Gunner is about since it's all wrapped up now? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's about a a ranger, an army ranger, who comes back. He's kind of a lifer, played by Luke, who comes back um, from a, multiple tours of duty um, to a small town in Virginia. And he doesn't really know his kids. And his wife uh, said that if he went again, that she would leave him just because the angst is too much to deal with, you know. And so he comes back and he's got these two uh, boys. Uh, one's a teenager and the other one's about 10. And he decides to take them on a camping trip to get to know them a little better. And so while they're on this camping trip, they run across this uh, group of, uh, of drug uh, um, lords that are manufacturing fentanyl. And so his, his two boys get uh, kidnapped in the, in the process. It's an accident that they run across all this. And so then he uh, he has to go and save his kids. And, uh, and you know, basically these drug uh, uh, lords have uh, picked a fight with the wrong guy. What was that like working with Luke Hemsworth? Because I know that his other brothers get a lot of, you know, screen time you know chris hemsworth liam hemsworth but i know luke hemsworth from westworld i think he's a really underrated actor what was that like directing him well i i think what's really interesting is that luke uh came out of that academy in australia where you've had several wonderful actors and actresses who have won academy awards so he's a real serious actor and uh I lucked out because he's a really good actor, you know, and he's also a father. So he's got a father. He's a father of, of uh, three daughters. It was wonderful. Um, the action sequences, I have a, a, a stunt team that I work with that I got out of uh, Thailand when I did, when I rebooted uh, the kickboxer franchise a few years ago. And I've worked with them ever since. And then they've worked on movies like Gray Man and Extraction and all this. So they're a wonderful stunt team. And so I was assuming that I'd have to double him. Um, just because, you know, you, the kind of stuff they do is very complicated and dangerous. And and uh, and he was able to pick up on all of their uh, stunts and the timing and everything else very quickly. Uh, he's a former boxer and he's very agile and his, his timing uh, with his body movements and stuff is terrific. So not only is he a good actor, but he's a wonderful action actor. So I was very pleasantly surprised. That had to have been a nice, pleasant surprise because I'm sure that a lot of actors in Hollywood would just maybe off the bat want a stunt double. Do you find that that's uh, sort of the common thing? It depends. You know, I think that Tom Cruise has set the bar so high for everybody that everybody is trying, you know, Keanu Reeves as well. I think they're all trying to do their own stunts. Um, I oftentimes I'll, I'll watch and see how um, good they are, meaning not so good at performing the stunt, but being careful while they're performing the stunt. And I'll make a determination as to whether I should double them just because I just want to want anybody to get hurt. 
you know, I did, I've done a lot of action TV and a lot of action films. And for the most part, you know, outside of bruises and bumps, very few people get hurt. And, and a lot of young actors will want to do things that look easy, you know, um, but there are, you can get really hurt really badly. Um, for those who are watching this, how many years have you had in the business? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, probably about 30, 34, something like that. I started out and, uh, I did a lot of action TV. Um, uh, I did air America with Lorenzo Lamas, uh, syndicated television. I did. Uh, Robin Hood, which was shot over for Warner Brothers, and I, I directed some of those. I did my camera episodes, so I did a lot of television, which which um, uh, many uh, action film directors they start in television, and it gives them a really great. Um, I always say it's like the Marine Corps, you know, because you have a limited amount of time to shoot uh, fifty pages of television. And uh, and you have to make decisions quickly and you can prepare all you want, but you'll have to live with whatever it is that you shot. And you can tell pretty quickly what works and what doesn't. And so either way, you have to live with uh, those decisions and hopefully you remember what works <laughs> and you carry it forward and you use it later on. You know, uh, Dick Donner uh, was one of my favorite directors. He directed Superman and he directed a lot of. Uh, fun action where you you know the leading men were funny right. um and he came from big deal television so um i think the television really gives you a great place to work out you know like what your style is and what your approach is yeah that but also it gives you an opportunity again to see what works and what what is going to play and what isn't i mean you know you look at stuff that you did, you know, two weeks ago and you see it cut together and you go, Oh my God, I can't believe, I can't believe I made that choice. Who the hell would make that choice? That's crazy. You know, or you can, you'll see people laughing and you'll see, you'll pull off a stunt that would be in a big movie. And then you'll say to yourself, wow, that worked. That was kind of cool. Now, so. I don't, now I don't know if this is a bit of an odd question, but you know, obviously in the last 10 years or so, superhero movies have been, very big, very popular, very uh, much integrated with action. Has that changed your approach when it comes to filming action? Because obviously action of movies today is much different, in my personal opinion, of action from, say, the 80s. So has the landscape of superhero movies changed how one directs action in just any movie? Well, no, not to me. I mean, you know, when you have, when you, you know, I, I try not to even think about it, frankly, because it, at the end of the day, you know, you've got a good guy and you've got a bad guy. Pardon me. And, um, and that good guy or bad guy could be flying in space and you could be throwing each other uh, across New York and banging into buildings or you can just easily, just as easily be doing it in a bar. Now, my stuff, because of, you know, uh, the budgets, I'm, in, I'm at the high end of independent features. Um, my guys are authentic. Most of the stuff that we do and the kind of action that we pull off is authentic. We don't, we can't cheat it. We can't fly people through the air. And so I have to use really great stunt people and uh and get them to pull off stuff that you know you'll look at it and you'll say oh wow that's kind of cool i didn't think a human being could do that you know <laughs> um so and i think i think uh the audience is going back to that um because um you know when i pull it off i i start to see that that our numbers go up really high you know on my last film Jiu-Jitsu was released by by Netflix, and in the first week, I think we were number four in the U.S. and number one in Canada. So, and it's an independent feature, and it went up against some huge um, studio films. So, I think I think that people are getting a little numb to the blue screen stuff, you know, 
Because how many, again, how many you can, I guess you could throw somebody through a building and then you throw them through a planet and then you throw them through the sun and, <laughs> you know, um, and that's fun. I, I enjoy them just like anybody else. But, you know, I think that people like, you know, I saw Gray Man, uh, which Netflix made, right? And there's a lot of really authentic action in that, you know, um, and Ryan Gosling did a lot of it himself and they integrated it with a lot of crazy things as well, which you do. Um, but I think people really enjoy seeing what, what agile, wonderful human beings can pull off on screen. I would 100% agree with that. I think, um, just as an example, uh, with the Daredevil and the Punisher series on Netflix, right? Seeing John Bernthal and Charlie Cox duke it out. And you can kind of tell that that's really them duking it out with each other is very cool um so i do well, agree. and they're coming back right both of them yeah. are uh they just got called back which is which tells you um what those numbers were and so i i was always wondering if they would get called back and all of a sudden they're they're re-upping them yeah they are they're coming back so that's going to be a lot of fun um mm -hmm. did you ever have like a desire if they called you up for any of like the marvel or dc stuff if they said hey can you come direct you know either one of our tv shows or movies is that something you would be interested in well sure i mean anything that's different in a challenge uh of course you know um it's a completely different approach you know because you have to do things with blue screen and you and you really have to approach things a little differently you know um but I, I think, again, anything that's challenging and if the story is really good, at the end of the day, it has to be about someone and you have to care about those people. And no matter what, you know, you really have to, your heart has to go out and, and wrap itself around these characters, you know. And that's what Luke, that, that's what Luke has done is he's made it between him and the boys that I cast. You're really going to care about these characters. That's what I was going to ask if it was the story and characters that drew you to wanting to uh, direct Gunner. Yes. Originally, that's exactly what it was. Um, and because, uh, you know, the action carries itself. But if you don't care about the uh, outcome, it doesn't really matter, you know. Now, Morgan Freeman is also in Gunner. Could you tell us a little bit about his character as well? Yeah. Well, Morgan Freeman. I cast him as a bad guy and he's played a few bad guys throughout his, his career, but he's really, uh, he's the head of this whole cartel, so to speak. And he's just terrific. You know, um, talk about somebody who's a, who's a really authentic actor, you know, um, he's had so many years, uh, where he's perfected his craft and, um, he's just really good. That's awesome. Um, now, since you just start, I'm sorry, not sorry. Since you just finished filming last week, when should we expect to see Gunner? Um, it'll be a few months before I deliver it. Um, and then I think chances are it'll probably come out in, uh, let's see, if I, if, if I deliver it around August-ish or September, um, it'll probably come out, might be November. Or it might be the new year. Are we hoping to see Gunner in theaters or is this going to be a streaming movie or do we not know yet? You know, you never know until you, you test it. Um, but my, uh, it, it tends now to be that you have to have a really big movie to hold a theater. You know, um, Top Gun was in theaters for quite a while, but a lot of pictures, including uh you know, a lot of studio pictures, they tend to hit the theaters day and date now. So they'll be in the theaters and you'll be able to stream them. And they're, what are they charging? $14 or $19 or something like that. So, cause everybody and his brother has a big screen at home. Yeah. <laughs> you might I, have not a be able I have to... a 50 inch right behind me. So <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, you know, it's funny, but you know, between Best Buy and Costco and everything else, you can just, you can just, uh, pay 30 or 40 dollars a month you have this amazing big screen with the surround sound and i think it's great i think any anywhere any way people can watch entertainment and lose themselves for about an hour and a half or two hours i think uh more power to them i think that's a 
it's such an amazing tape because you do see some directors who don't really want to see their film on streaming. They insist that someone must go to a theater. They don't. So it's, it's uh, frankly refreshing to hear that take on this. Well, I understand that, you know, and, and my son, you know, when he wanted to go see Dune, you know, he really, there's amazing cinematography and they, they wanted to go see it in the theater. They wanted to go see it at the, in the Grauman's Chinese, I think here in Hollywood. But, but I think for the most part, um, I started out in film and I came out of film school and, and almost everything was film. And then everybody said, oh my God, you know, video's out, video's going to destroy the film business, blah, blah, blah. And uh, when television first came out way before our time, both our time, um, everybody said that, you know, the television set's going to destroy the film business. I think anywhere where you can watch entertainment and you can, again, lose yourself and enjoy yourself because because the stuff that I make is all about you being able to put your life on pause and just have fun and live through the characters. And, and hopefully, you know, you see these characters that have absolutely no way of ever winning. They have no way of ever succeeding. Uh, and they do. You know, they're they're abused and they're they get taken advantage of by the bully. Uh, but somehow or other they pull it out at the end. And I think, you know, no matter what age you are, I think we all want to be able to live through this kind of character. You know, you may have a boss or you may have somebody in your life that, you know, you'd love to be able to just punch in the face. Not that I suggest you do. <laughs> But certainly, if you watch my film, you can watch my actors do just that for you. You know, you can live vicariously through. But yes, that's a, that's exactly. the message now. Don't don't actually do it in real life. <laughs> Please don't, don't 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 get me wrong. God forbid anybody listens and does something dumb. But you certainly can go and watch you know one of my films, and you can just live vicariously and watch um, watch some really wonderful acting and some wonderful. Um, uh, action sequences. So, so you're home now from filming Gunner. I know you said you wanted to relax, but what's the next project that you're working on? You know, I've got a couple projects. I've got one called Flying Shadow that I'm working on right now. Um, and I've got, um, I've got a, a remake that I'm working on with another very big producer I own a project called The Best of Times, which was originally with Robin Williams and Kurt Russell way back when. And it's a it's a kind of a, it's a comedy. Um, and we're putting that together. That's going to be a studio picture. Um, so I'm working on a couple of different projects that I, I'm, I'm uh, working on casting right now. So hopefully I'll be able to do pull off another one of those in the uh, summertime. And then everybody is is dying for me to make another uh, kickboxer i've got a third part of the kickboxer trilogy that they want me to make so are you more inclined to make it oh yeah i've got a wonderful script it's just awesome. a matter of when yeah <laughs> well yeah. hopefully uh at some point soon so uh the fans can uh stop their long waiting right right I mean, I, I met with Jean-Claude Van Damme, who wants to do another one. And um, hopefully we'll be able to pick a date and, and get that going. Awesome. Well, I hope that when that does happen, maybe you can sprinkle a little information our way so we can put that out. Um, oh, I'd love to. So are you on social media? Can our viewers find you so they can track your, you know, what you're doing and all that? Yeah, I don't really, uh, I've got a, I'm on uh, Instagram uh, at Dimitri site, D-I-M-I-T-R-I-S-I-T dot com. And I only post when I'm doing something. Uh, but when I start posting, usually everybody start. we're, we're going to create a gunner site uh, shortly. So we'll be able to just start putting up material on gunner. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Instagram and, and you can follow uh, some pictures of, of our of our shooting pretty soon. I think in the next month and a half or so, we're going to start posting little videos and behind the scenes and things like that. And hopefully, we'll release a trailer soon. And you know, All right. Well, we will certainly keep our eye out for it. 
Gunner sounds really amazing. I do look forward to it. And as I said earlier, I do appreciate you taking the time to even speak with me. Um, and hopefully on the next project, we'll get to speak again. No, thank you so much for, uh, also for being interested in taking the time. And I wish you well and uh, and all your viewers well and, and uh, enjoy the film when it comes out. Yes, absolutely. Thank you again, Dimitri. Thank you. Bye-bye.